and the Sooners of Oklahoma, 10 and 2 on the year. Playing in their seventh All State Sugar Bowl. Here come the Sooners. Out of her mouth, it's like what crazy glue face with her. Yes, well, this is an inspired Oklahoma team again. If you look at the injuries that they've suffered and, and the fact that they have fought and fought and scratched their way to 10 wins and earned their right to a BCS bowl and now playing Alabama, a heavy favorite in this ball game, playing them completely off their feet. Yeah, baby, that's what's up. Having both teams number one this year is not a product just this year. It's, it's been coming over time. I think it's a testament to the University of Oklahoma, how they've uh, supported men's and women's gymnastics. Sixteen wins in a row over Oklahoma State here in Norman. Tonight, Oklahoma 88, Oklahoma City 76. Well, Bedlam began as a, as a rivalry, not between the football teams, but the wrestling program. Okay. Ross Larson with two seconds left. And there's a shooter, Bedlam! <laughs> what a meet! Ross Larson is a winner at heavyweight three to two. The Sooners win the final four bouts, win at 16 to 15, and Bedlam has broken out again. Welcome to Studio D on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. This is Sooner Sports Pad. Now, here's your host, Allison Gappa. Welcome to Sooner Sports Pad. I'm Allison Gappa alongside Matt McCulloch and Roy Nevitt, and we are so excited to be back for a brand new season of Sooner Sports Pad. That's right. God, that video oh, was incredible, so good, wasn't right? it? If that doesn't get this crowd going, I don't know, I know. what will. I know. They're pretty good, though. They're pretty good already. <laughs> the lacrosse team as well as the men's and women's gymnastics team. We've also got in that crowd Miley Canova and, El and Preston Ellsworth. We're going to talk with him later on in the show. Two gymnasts. They're awesome. Men's gymnastics number one, women's number two. Can't wait to talk with them, guys. That's right. And later, even though football season is still seven months away, we'll take a look to find out who will be OU's next breakout player. Also later, me and Matt are going head-to-head -head and face-off when we talk about which OU team is bringing home the next but first up, guys, we have got to talk about the Sugar Bowl. The win, 45-31 to 31 over Alabama. And, guys, Trevor Knight absolutely exploded for 32 of 44 passes. He completed 348 yards. Guy, Lauren, he really came into his own tonight. That's right. Well, Duke's never named a starting QB before the Sugar Bowl, but there shouldn't be any question. Uh, Knight had struggled with accuracy earlier uh, in the season, but against Bama, he was throwing dimes down the field and made big plays when the Sooners needed momentum, Com uh, completing 32 passes for 348 yards, a Sugar Bowl record, by the way. Looking forward to next season, you're looking at a high-caliber athlete uh, who possesses a full toolbox of talent, and he can be one of the best dual threat QBs in college football, honestly. Confidence is a game-changer in quarterbacks, and after his performance against Bama, he should have plenty of it. Expectations will, be, will definitely be high for Knight and the Sooners. Definitely. So many people looking forward to what the Sooners are going to do in spring ball. And, Matt, it wasn't just Trevor Knight and OU's offense that absolutely dominated this game. OU's defense, they had seven. Seven sacks on Alabama quarterback A.J. McCarron. McCar Talk about them. Yeah, that's right. While Knight's performance was absolutely stellar, we have to give major props, though, to the defense for holding A.J. McCarron in that potent tied offense. The, the defense didn't ease up on McCarron throughout the entire 60 minutes of the game. The D registered seven sacks and forced five total turnovers that all led to OU scores. So the consistent pressure that the D-line put on McCarron to either throw the ball away or make really bad, a uh, really poor decision uh, with the ball uh, – was really the difference maker. So I think the Tenacious D uh, really came out to play and that really showed um, and they absolutely steamrolled the roll uh, the side. absolutely <laughs> did. And with a win like that, how can you not be excited for <laughs> next season? That's right. <laughs> the life right here in Norman is unbelievable. And so 
So later on in the show, our own Drew Farley, he's going to talk about that returning talent. Also some voids that the Sooners need to fill, replacing guys like Aaron Colvin, Jalen Saunders. So they might be, you know, with the, the voids being filled, a national contender next year. It's not just the football team, though, that national contender. We've got men's and women's gymnastics right. teams in here. There's also a lot of other sports here in Norman that are ranked in the top polls. Men's gymnastics, like I said, number one. Number two, women's preseason ranking for softball. Number two, number six, wrestling. Number nine, men's tennis. And at number 21, guys, is men's right. basketball team. Okay. This is, this I like is a it. team that has been so much fun to watch. Talk about what the men's basketball team has done this year. Well, you know, men's basketball so far is 17 and five in the big and six and three in the Big 12. And a big reason for their success is Ryan Spangler. His energy, oh, yeah. his intensity is just fueling the team. He played a huge role in the win against number eight, Oklahoma State, when he recorded 15 points in a career high, 17 rebounds. This guy is just tough. Not only does he lead the Big 12 in rebounds, averaging 10 per game, but he also leads the Big 12 with nine double doubles. Wow. The next highest is only six. <laughs> so the Sooners aced their test against OSU, but now they just need to bounce back from their loss against number 16, Iowa State. Yeah, that's right. The thing that has made the, helped the Sooners to be where they are right now today is the offensive production that we've seen from the entire team so far. All five of the team's starters are averaging double figures in scoring. Buddy Heald and Cam Clark lead the team right now in scoring with 17 and 16.1 points per game, respectively. And like you said, Ryan Spangler has really flourished this year, averaging a double-double. Um, so they're, they're really starting to play better defense, which was a really big factor before in the, early, in the early parts of the season. But they're really starting to figure that out now, and they're getting production from everybody on the team. That's and that's right. really going to help to make it into March Madness later on. In the well, season. another team, another team that's not ranked but still doing well is women's basketball. Ooh, yeah. And the person making a huge difference in that is senior guard Erin Ellenberg. Yep. She's averaging almost 20 points a game for the Sooners and is Oklahoma's third leading career scorer of all time. Not to mention, Ellenberg usually has exceptional performances in the second half when the team is under pressure. She was the key to the Sooners' win against OSU, and you can usually expect her to be player of the game. Yeah, you're right. While those eight losses doesn't look that good on paper, you have to take a look back and see who and how they lost those games. Two of them come from teams that were in the top five, and then three of those losses, including one to number five Louisville, were in, was in overtime. So this team is still really good. They just haven't really been able to close it out late in the game, uh, but still a really good team. Still a really good team. Well, one of the teams you saw earlier, men's gymnastics ranked number one. Yeah, They're just yeah. dominating right now. Even though they've already competed against three teams ranked in the top 10, the Sooners remain undefeated That's on the right. season with their latest win oh. against number 10, Iowa State, or Iowa. Oh, you finished that meet winning five events out of the six with junior Michael Reed stepping up and winning both pommel horse and parallel bars. Wow. Not to mention the Sooners team score right now is the highest in program history. OU will face its toughest opponent of the regular season when they take on number three Stanford at McCaslin Fieldhouse on Saturday. Well, during their second straight week on the road, the women's gymnastics team was edged out by a very narrow margin to the defending national champion Florida Gators. And in the face of a big time road challenge, the team showed great maturity and composure but would ultimately suffer defeat. An early fall on the beam was overcome by senior Taylor Spears as she posted her third outing this year of recording a 9.9 .9 or better in that event. So that after two, talent. Yeah, it is. After two long weeks on the road, though, they'll be back here this Sunday whenever they take on number three, LSU. All right, guys, thanks so much. Don't go anywhere because coming up next in Face Off, we're going to debate who is taking down OU's next national championship. Stick around. It's now time for Face Off, where we debate hot topics. I'm joined by gymnast Preston Ellsworth and Miley Kneva. They're going to help me out with some Face Off questions. First up, Lauren, you're going to you're going first, so get ready okay. for this. Okay. <laughs> if you were starting a superhero group, which sports athletes would you take? Um, men's gymnastics because they oh, can already wow. fly, <laughs> and no one got it. They already wear tights, and they're invincible right now because they haven't lost yet, and they're the strongest guys on campus. So definitely superhero worthy. I don't know. There's no question here. It's got to be Eric Stryker. His name says it all. He's like the Hulk. He's big. He's strong, and you wouldn't like it whenever he's, he's mad. He's scary. <laughs> scary stuff. All right, this one's coming from Preston. All right, change one word from a movie title to Sooners to describe OU athletics in 2014. 
Lord of the Rings, uh, Return of the Sooners. There's so <laughs> many good teams right now that more than one team can get a national championship ring. All right here. Uh, guys, how does this sound? Sooners, the great and the powerful. Uh, right now, the Sooners, there's six teams in the top 25 right now. Sooner Sports is scary good right now. They're awesome. Okay. The okay, guys, scary good. Who's taking home their next national championship? Got to go with softball. The defending national champs are going to repeat. Great number two in the preseason polls. They're returning all seven of their starters. This team's always good. I got to go with my guys over here. The men's gymnastics team looks yeah. like the most okay. complete squad on campus right now. They, the, the season right now is in their favor. I, think, I like the, the odds. Over. They're going to get it done this year. They're trying to win the crowd over right now. They're going to bring home all one right, of these. All right, crowd. We are on. going to pick but. our winner now. Cheer your loudest for whoever you think won. Lauren's going to be up first. Was it Lauren? Woo! Okay. Woo! That's not bad. It's going to be hard. I don't know. That's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. Or was it Matt? Yeah. I think Matt, Matt has gotten the first face-off winner of the season. Congratulations, Thank Matt. You. Well, Thank if you can't job, tell Matt. by now, we like to have fun here on Sooner Sports Pad. So our own Drew Farley went to campus, and you know what? He asked people what they do know about OU Spring Sports in a new Hey guys, Drew Farley here with South Oval, Oval Sports. Sports. I'm with Hey guys, Drew Farley here with South Oval Sports. I'm with Jake. We're going to do a quick game, okay? And we're going to I'm going to name sports, and you're just going to tell me the head coach of that sport, okay? All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with the easy one. Football. Bob Stoops. How about men's basketball? I have no idea after that. So football. Uh, Bob Stoops. Men's basketball. I don't remember. Bob Stoops. Basketball. Men's basketball. Should know this, but I don't. But men's basketball. Not Sherry Cole. Women's basketball. Sherry Cole. Excellent. Men's basketball. Long Kruger. Good, you're the first one to get that. Can you believe that? How about men's tennis? Men's tennis. Um, when I don't know, I'm just going to stick with a basic answer and just keep saying David Bourne. I grew up watching Andre Agassi and Andy Roddick and stuff. So, so Roddick. Roddick might be a familiar name to you then, right? Yes. Okay, so what if I told you that his brother John Roddick was the tennis coach? I would be astounded because I had <laughs> no idea. On the campus of the University of Oklahoma right now, who is your favorite athlete among all of them? Trevor Knight, without a doubt. Trevor Knight. Trevor Knight, and that's football. Well done. What makes you like Trevor Knight? Uh, everybody else does. Favorite athlete would be Sterling Shepard. Why is Sterling Shepard your favorite athlete among all the other ones here at OU? He's got a great smile. He does have a great smile. Women's gymnastics. Skip. Men's tennis. Skip. Rowing. Skip. Women's tennis. Skip. Cross country. Skip. Track and field. Skip. Wrestling. Skip. Women's basketball. Sherry Cole. Nice. <laughs> Special thanks to our Cornerstone Television partners, Chesapeake Energy, Windstar World Resorts, Anheuser-Busch, OU Outreach, OU Alumni Association, OU Medicine, and the OU President's Associates. Welcome back to Sooner Sports Pad. The 2013 Oklahoma football team featured a number of young players entering the spotlight. Stoops and company are going to have to look to replace players like Aaron Colvin and Jalen Saunders. And so our own Drew Farley has the scoop on who the next breakout player might be. The moment remains frozen in time. The confetti still lingers in the air. Contrary to what everyone believes, there they were, hoisting a trophy. In a year that was pegged to be a year to rebuild, Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma Sooners managed to shatter all expectations. They settled the score in South Bay, stayed on top in Stillwater, and Coach Stoops even passed the great Barry Switzer in all-time wins. It would all lead to the epic showdown against Nick Saban's dynastic Crimson Tide, and after a 45-31 victory, the Sooners' storybook season had its storybook ending. But the story of Sooner football is never really over. While the chapter ends for a class of graduating seniors, their departure will allow the next generation to leave their mark on the program. 
The inevitable position battle for Aaron Colvin's vacated cornerback spot should be one of the headlines throughout spring ball. There's plenty of young talent to compete for the job with young players like Stan Von Taylor, Cortez Johnson, LJ Moore, and Dakota Austin, all of whom will compete to be the next great Sooner corner. And at safety, young studs Ahmad Thomas and Hatari Bird will battle it out to take over for Gabe Lynn. Both the sophomore safeties have been lauded for their physical style of play. As for the offense, Josh Heupel seems to have found himself a quarterback. But there's no doubt he'll look to surround the Sugar Bowl MVP with some more talent. Gone from the running back core, Brennan Clay, Trey Millard, Damian Williams, and Roy Finch. Four backs who combined for 365 carries in 2013. Can Keith Ford and Alex Ross rise to the occasion? Or will Coach Gundy look to a talented recruiting class for answers? Departing from the receiving core? Jalen Saunders, LeColton Bester, and Jazz Reynolds. Three pass catchers who combined for over 1,300 receiving yards in 2013. Sterling Shepard suddenly becomes the seasoned veteran, while contributors like Deron Neal and Derek Woods itch to break out. No matter who steps into the spotlight in 2014, you can be sure that expectations will be as high as ever in Norman. And as for the never-ending story of Sooner football, well, let's just say that Sooner fans can't wait to see what happens next. Drew Farley, Sooner Sports Pad. Thanks, Drew. With so much to look forward to in spring ball, there is plenty going on with men's and women's gymnastics. Matt and Lauren are standing by now with gymnasts Preston Ellsworth and Miley Kaneva. Guys? Thanks for being here, guys. No problem. Thank you. Well, Preston, let's dive into this. How does it feel to be number one? Tell me. I mean, what do you guys do maybe to prevent becoming complacent you know, throughout the, re the remainder of the season? You know, it's, uh, we're extremely honored to be number one right now. Um, it's just waking up every morning, sticking to the daily regimen. Uh, just going into the gym and doing our thing, you know, just sticking to the coach's plan. So, Miley, you guys were ranked number one. Now you're two after just losing to Florida, who won the national championship last year. How do you bounce back from that? Well, we just have been back in the gym, and we're motivated as ever, and we're working on the details and those landings and angles. Well, like she said, you guys were both runner-ups last season in the national championship. How has that motivated you guys looking at this season right now? Well, it's not just one time being a runner-up. I've actually uh, three-peated the runner-up uh, since I've been here. So it's just, you know, sticking to it, going to the gym every day with that mentality that, you know, we've been runner-ups and we want to get uh, the big championship. Yeah, same here. Being runner-up is really motivating to get back in the gym and work hard because we were really, really close and we know that we're capable of doing it. So Preston, you're captain of the team. What have you learned over the past four years that have helped, that's helped you step up into this leadership role? Well, uh, when I came in as a freshman, there was uh, five Olympians that uh, had graduated. Uh, two of them were still on the team when I was a freshman. There was five national championships in 10 years. Uh, and just watching uh, the older guys, the Olympians, their work ethic and, and how they lead a team, that's uh, basically the only shoes I've been trying to fill since then. All right, well, Allison has an audience question for you guys. I do. This one is coming from Chris, who is on the lacrosse team. Hi, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite event? If I had to pick one out of the six, uh, I would go with Vault. I All-American on that event in uh, 2012. What about you, Miley? Vault for sure, too. Oh, all right. Yep. Well, guys, don't go anywhere because coming up next in this week's Sooner Sports Pad Challenge, our hosts are facing off with Miley Kneva and Preston Ellsworth in balloon style. Stick around. It's going to be a good one. You're watching Sooner Sports Pad, better than the old Big Eight. Welcome back to Sooner Sports Pad. It's now time for our challenge of the week. Gymnasts Preston Ellsworth and Miley Kaneva, they've been joining us all show long, and they're going to team up against our hosts in Balloon Stomp. That's right. How's it, it work, guys? Well, the so, rules are pretty simple. Very um, me simple, and Lauren actually. will be on a team. You and Preston will be on a okay. team. And we have this whole space to run around, and Perfect. we're going to try and pop y'all's balloons. And you guys are going to try... 
Yeah, try you to pop ours. You guys will try to pop ours, and the first team to have all their balloons popped loses. Yeah. Correct. So, all right. Got, you ready? guys We're are ready. going to go on ready? my one count. We Here we this. go. Three, pop two, own. one, go. Careful. Yeah. Ah. Oh, no, you don't have to. Oh, no. you, you, don't, you guys can spread out. Oh, we can spread <laughs> out. <laughs> Oh, I lost one balloon. <laughs> okay, all right. Come here. Uh, can I play? Can I play? Get it, get it, get it. Oh, no. All right. Oh, I'm like, oh, no, they're going to Oh, 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 God, run. Oh, 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 I'm running. It's my field. I like it. I'll try to help you out. Oh, no. Where is it? I lost my balloon. Oh, no. Hey, all right, we got it. We've got, got our winners. Yeah, good, good. I'm holding them. I got it. Yeah, I'm trying to pop this. Okay, fine. You, you guys come over here. Um, I mean, what was what was your strategy? Behind? Yeah. I know, you guys are obviously you, really you good like, at it. You guys started you off with tandem, and I was like, hey. You got to be dominant yeah, with it. Right. You got to be, gotta you just got to go it, for right? it. I mean, what? The, how do you think gymnastics is translated to help you just swim balloons? <laughs> Well, you got to start with the right mindset and right, to pop those right. balloons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we were motivated and we got it done. <laughs> well, you guys did. You got, and um, I mean, continuing on to that, you guys both had vault as your favorite. Um, talk about how that helps you out with balloon stomps. <laughs> oh, that, that running aggression, <laughs> that hitting the springboard. Power, it's it's power. just, that's all I thought about was getting my knees up and just yep. smacking it. It's, yep. it's the yeah. launch onto the springboard For that sure. really helps you guys g go into it, right? It was all about the balloon training. Okay. Yep. Okay. Perfect. We actually well, um, you know what? Coming up this week on uh, Sooner Sports TV, we've Something got football not. signing day coverage <laughs> all day on Wednesday. But you guys also have a very exciting week, right? We do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You Tell guys, you guys are facing off with LSU number <laughs> three are, right now. Are. Talk about that matchup. Yep. Well, it's uh, Sunday at 1:45 in the Lloyd Noble Center, and okay. it's going to be a really big competition. They're really good, and we're really pumped. We can't wait. Woo! All right, well, come out and support these guys. They've been great all show long. That's all the time that we have, but we'll see you guys next week. Good job.